Personal Log, Admiral Harracks. Encrypt Level 8. We've now been stationed at the Kokonan Gate for 61 days. Rumor has been rife as to our purpose here, and all eyes are trained on the cloudy miasma of the other side of the border. Personally, I have never had a mote of doubt as to our destiny. For decades, our great commonwealth has been in decline. Our worlds grow dusty and unkempt, our people listless and grey. The palace of the High Marshal is attempting to restart our nation to the beating drum of war. The order came six minutes ago. We are to move against the machines, a fledgling nation of sentient computers who, Sijint assures me, have no capacity to mount any meaningful resistance. I ask, is this what we have become? Galactic thugs, so bored of comfort that we throw ourselves into fires we ourselves have lit. There will be talk of glory, strength and heroism. The record will paint us as crusaders of justice. The truth, however, will be just as clouded and overcast as the rest of our once great nation. To battle we will go, a future we will sow, for we live for a sword drawn, a battle cry at dawn, and when our flag is raised, our marshals shall be praised. A commonwealth today, a commonwealth tomorrow, a commonwealth forever. You know, I turned off the glorious music in this game. And it is glorious music, and I turned it off so when I lose track and just go and ramble about random stuff, like, I, I don't know why why school buses in America are yellow, um, I, I can cut that out, and there's not like a horrible, like, jerky cut there. But it does mean I have to essentially replace the entire soundtrack uh, with, with um, amazing Stellaris music. Um, that's, uh, that's going to take a lot of work. I'm looking forward to that. But you don't have to worry about it. Hello! Welcome back! Uh, it's, it's the third and final, I promise you, final installment of How to Fight Wars in Stellaris. We have talked about weaponry. We've talked about... Uh, well, what, what, what haven't we talked about? We've talked about fleet doctrines. We've talked about um, strategies. We've talked about intelligence gathering. We've talked about how, how to fit your ships. Uh, you know, uh, fleet doctrines. What destroyers do. What point defense things are. Uh, having carriers and Battlestar Galactica Apollo Viper things flying out to be heroes. All kinds of stuff like that. And you've been with me for the journey. And I appreciate that. I think there's been some sort of graphical update. This is how long this series has taken. This all looks very cloudy now. Very, very bright. Maybe that's just my monitor. Or maybe I have a brighter inflection in life. Who knows? Today, we are actually going to be going to war in this war tutorial for the first time. Um, so, thank you for bearing with me. Um, I know there's been a little bit of a delay in my content. Um... I, I am sorry, uh, it's uh, real life stuff, I suppose. And that happens. Unfortunately, as much as we would like to just run space empires, real life does occasionally pop in and say, no, you will not be able to do what you wish to. We will muck that up, says the Great Council of Real Life. So, what are we going to do today? First of all, we're going to talk about jump drives, because uh, that we kind of teased that in the end of the last video, didn't we? Um, we're going to talk about what that does, how we can... It's not really like war stuff, but it has a massive effect um, if you don't do it properly. So, we're going to talk about that. We are going to actually uh, go and, and tell these zeros what for. We're going to take our Great Velvet Commonwealth and we're going to thrust it firmly into the heart of these upstart machines. We're also going to talk about ground combat. We're going to talk about um, amazing space marines. Yes, we're going to talk about that. And we're going to we're going to conquer some stuff. We're going to do that today. Finally. So, 
without further ado, here is the itinerary uh, for this final part of the war tutorial. Uh, enjoy it. Feel free to obviously skip ahead and uh, do all kinds of stuff to uh, pick out the information that you're looking for. If you just want to uh, enjoy the class, then sit back, relax, uh, enjoy the, the logo that's about to appear, and we'll see you in a moment. Okay, all right, let's, 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 let's hop to it. So, jump drives. If you're at the start of the game, obviously this is not something you're going to, to be uh, dealing with. Uh, jump drives are a propulsion technology uh, that basically ena enables you to essentially ignore the hyperlane system. You can just jump from point to point as long as it is, it, blah, 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 as long as it is within this radius here. Well, that's a radius. Diameter! I suppose, the circle. If you can jump within the circle. And obviously, because technically the map is 3D, technically, sometimes when you're on like the, the very edge, like this system here, right? What side is that on? Ish? Kind of? Oh no, look, look, now it's, oh, it's outside. It's outside, we see that little line coming up. It's outside. <gasps> so if I try to jump to it, no, not allowed. Well, I can't because they closed the borders, but you know, they. Borders don't really matter when you're at war. So that's what a jump drive is. Um, it's in the physics tree, technologically. Um, let's see if we can just bring it up here uh, on physics. Go to research physics technologies. Uh, we have a look. Let's, let's just have a look here. Um, it's not that. It looks like that, but it's not that. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, in the, I think in this playthrough, I might have just skipped it because I've got the... The one that you get from the shroud, if you're playing. Yeah, I haven't, that's really irritating. Um, yeah, just, yeah, I think I just skipped it. Um, so the one that I'm running at the moment is called the side jump drive. So we can have a look here. There it is. I think I got that from the shroud, um, which of course you can only access if you're playing spiritualist of some description. Uh, we'll probably cover that in some other video. It's wonderful. It's oh, I love it. Um, it's the best jump drive you can get, and essentially, yeah. You put it you put it on a ship, you click this button, initiate jump. Begin jump prep, Mr. Gator. Um actually did did Lieutenant Gator do that in Battlestar? I'm not sure. I have to watch it all again, just to answer that question. Um, and we can click on any system within the range that we uh, that is you know delineated. Is that is that the right word? I don't know, it sounds good. Um by this orange hashed line. Dashed line, something line. As long as we have political ability to go there. So we can't just like appear in people's space when the borders are closed. Uh, because we're nice and we respect people's boundaries uh, for now. But if we wanted to go to say Sovol. Because you know, it's all happening at Sovol. We would just click our fleet here. We click the jump button. We've already done that. And we just left click. Done. In 14 days they would jump to the Sovol system. And let's, let's just unpause. Oh we've got the nice sound effect now as well. Womp, womp, womp. Look, they don't even have to... Oh, edit cancelled. Yeah, we're going to repause because we don't want them to actually jump. They don't have to go to the edge of the system either. They just go. They just go do it. Right, we're going to cancel that now. And go back. Don't crash into each other! There we are. Good work. We're obviously dealing with the, uh, the northern fleet, which is in the west, just to keep you on your toes. <laughs> so, those are jump drives. Now... When you fire your jump drive and jump to another system, there is a period where it is recharging. Oh, we need to pause the game again. There is a period while it is recharging, so you can't use it again. So you can't like go one to two to three to four instantly. You have to wait. Whilst your jump drives are recharging, you've got these two bonkers penalties. Huge penalties. Ship weapons damage minus a half. It's huge. And sublight speed, minus 50%, which means it will take them ages to actually crawl across systems and, and go through the jump lane network um, as, as you would normally do. So, what's the lesson here? Don't jump into a battle space. Do not use jumping as a way to arrive at a battle. You can use it tactically to outmaneuver your opponent, 
but you are going to be crippled in terms of your actual combat output. So say say you've got uh, your... Uh, let, let, let's say, for example, that we've got a big old fleet, our enemy fleet, here at the border. And we wanted to kind of swoop round and take out their key systems in the north. And then, of course, they would have to come and meet us here in the north, which would take them time. It leaves our border undefended, but maybe we, we were fortified Kokonan to the nth degree, so it makes it difficult. Uh, it would make it difficult for them to be able to come this way and invade us. We could do that, and hopefully it would take more than 200 days for them to reach us, by which time our jump drives would have recharged and we would be back to fighting form. Uh, but it is a gamble. Would I recommend it? Only in extreme scenarios. So that's, that's your jump drive. You won't have it unless you've got a jump drive, obviously. Uh, it's not something that is uh, an early game technology. But, when you do have it, make sure to use it responsibly. Also, in terms of endgame crises, we'll cover them in a different tutorial, which will be very dramatic. Uh, we will uh, talk about the unbidden. And the unbidden appear if you use jump drives. Well, they may appear. It's more likely. Um, and they're, they're, they're some very funny fellows. So, we'll talk about that in another video. Anyway, those are jump drives. I think now... Ladies and gentlemen, we've, we've talked for hours about this, you know. If, if we don't do something, we're going to start getting some performance anxiety issues. So, let's let's do this. Hello, hello machine. Uh, I don't like your paintwork. It's, it's, it's not up to standard. It's covered in scratches. I'm not happy with it. So, I'm going to take the claims that we uh, claimed in one of the earlier videos. And we're going to say, no, we're going to, we're going to take these systems now. And we're going to click this button and it's going to feel good. Ah, and we are now at war. We are at war. Is today a good day to die? Maybe. I mean, we're not going to die because they're pathetic. This is only like a, a test war for informational purposes only. Informational, again, is not a word, but it is today. So this isn't a particularly, in terms of the game itself, it's not a particularly big fleet. It's 32k. Um, it's bigger than anything they have, but... I talk with people who like, yeah, I've got like a 2 million fleet power fleet by 2203 or something. Uh, and they're much better players than me, so listen to them. But for now, you've got me. So what we're going to do is we're just going to really, really strategically take all of our ships and we're going to tell them the grand plan, which is to go that way. Oh, all right, yeah. Let's just wait for the water to register. We have war because uh, some people have to learn the hard way. <laughs> Absolutely right. Uh, oh, they've sent a science ship in. Yeah, I think this war's going to go okay. So yeah, we're sending our fleet. Yeah, no, the science ship's disappeared. And off they go. Let's slow it down. Let's slow it down a bit. Bum, bum. I don't know why Jurassic Park, but bum, 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 bum. Bam, 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 bam. Gonna cause some issues for not having ships full of holes. Okay, and they're now starting to use the jump jump lanes. Not the jump drive. Let's not get confused. And in a second, they'll go, ba bam. There we go. And they will slowly appear. And they're about to enter the enemy system. Ba bam. I've lost fleet power. Why have I lost some fleet power? What happened there? I honestly don't know. It was 32k a second ago. Uh, I, 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 I don't... Oh, maybe, maybe it's this... No, that's it's not that edict. Um, I don't know. I, I think we've, we might have already covered this. But there are edicts... Uh, well, campaigns, really. Uh, edicts are the ones that cost influence. Uh, but these, these campaigns, some of them are very, very appropriate uh, for warfare. So we have uh, armor hit points. Turn that on. Wow, look at that. Look at that. It's actually increasing our fleet power in real time. Uh, volatile explosives. Yep, we'll put that. Volatile ammunition. Yep, we'll put that. Um, exotic gases for shield boost. Yep, we'll put that. Um, focusing crystals. Put that. All of them. All of them. And then the ambitions. Um, ship upkeep minus 20%. Why not? Uh, have we got any anything else that we would like to do? Will to power is brilliant, by the way. Um, I think... I think no. Grand Fleet, that's going to... Look at our, our fleet cap's gone up. Hugely. Uh, so, yeah, you could do lots of things with edicts if you've got the resources to sustain them um, to make your ships just that little bit more punchier. So, what's going to happen now? 
whenever, well, you probably know this already, whenever you uh, send any ship or fleet to another system, it will automatically lay a course for the star of that system, the Wendell system. This, of course, will bring it into direct conflict with this very scary space station, and it will begin to fight a battle with it. Now, the key thing is, is that when it, when, yes, when, it wins this battle, this space station will not be destroyed. Let's find out what happens. Oh, there's the science ship. It thinks it's safe. It's not. Battle commenced. Right, okay, so now, if we slow it down again. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. So let's just pause here. So as soon as this fleet gets within any kind of weapons range, it begins to engage. Uh, so we've now got um, our <coughs> carrier cruisers firing their main batteries. We've got the strike craft, which are here. You can see the little engine trails being launched from the carrier groups, which are here at the back. Um, and you see, oh, there's a little one. Yay, very nice. Um, diff multiple waves of them. Uh, we've got disruptor beams and null void beams firing. Um, and we're probably going to get some missiles as well on the way. Here's, here's a, a couple there. So we've got missiles and torpedoes. So that's all going to happen. And when this all hits, yeah. The strike craft now eating into that armor. Lots of damage being done. And there we go. Battle over. What's happened here? This station is now at one hull point. But it's not been destroyed. The only way to actually destroy a station is to, uh, after you've won a war, is to decommission it. Um, so, for example, if we went to the Brustam system and we clicked on this um, this uh, station here, we could... Oh! <laughs> I was looking for the button. It's right there. We could dismantle it. Um, and basically that would turn this system back into neutral territory. We would no longer have any ownership of it whatsoever. We wouldn't be able to build research stations or mining stations to claim space resources. It would just be neutral territory. Um, you generally don't ever need to do this. Uh, but if you wanted to, you'd click that button. But we're at war, so we can't. Um, but otherwise we'd just click that. Starbase would disappear. When you're at war, star bases that you successfully uh, take down to one hull points become yours. And then if if the enemy doesn't come um, and counterattack within 30 days, the station will become uh, will start repairing itself, getting its armor and shields back, and of course its hull points. So at the moment, this starbase is considered under occupation. Um, this means that we can't change what modules are on it. So we've got an anchorage here. We're still benefiting from that anchorage, but we can't change it. We can't dismantle it. We can't add new buildings. We can't do any of that, which is really irritating. Um, because it's our star base, why can't we do stuff? Anyway, we can't do anything to it at the moment. But it means that essentially this system is ours at the moment. Um, we haven't occupied it yet. Why? Why haven't we occupied it? Because there's a planet. There's the Bnuraka. Uh, Bnuraka! Yes, that wonderful, uh, wonderful planet of Bnuraka. And this planet is in our way. Sometimes there is a technology called an FTL inhibitor and you'll see because there'll be a little magnet icon like you can see here on the starbase This one's green because it's ours um, And it basically means that you can't push forward You can only exit the system by coming the by leaving the way you came um, And sometimes on planets they have these as well if they put a fortress uh, Building on the planet itself. What's a fortress? Let's look at mark Let's, re let's look at, um, at what we've got here. Uh, these military buildings would be like a stronghold. Uh, planetary stronghold uh, gives you more defense armies. Also, it will enable you to have a FTL inhibitor system. Um, so they don't have one. So we're fine at the moment. Sentient sentinel posts. Oh, that is interesting. Anyway, uh, I'm getting confused here. So, we need to conquer this planet. We need to conquer it. It's got a garrison. Mechanized defense armies. From 001. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about ground combat. 
Gonna have a short break, and then when we're back, yes, we are gonna build some Space Marines, so don't go anywhere. You've probably got loads of recommended videos that are way better than mine, but resist the urge to click on them. We'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed whatever ads YouTube thought you would enjoy the most. This is the third part of the Stellaris War tutorial. My name is Nova Kane, as you already know, because for you, only a few seconds have passed. Um, but for me, I've gone and got a cup of tea, which is absolutely superb. And whilst I was brewing said tea, I remembered something. I remembered something called, instead of sending troops down, let's just nuke it from orbit. Planetary bombardment is a big factor in Stellaris if you want to make some people unhappy. So, how does it work? How does it work? All we have to do is take a fleet and right click on a planet. <laughs> That's so simple it is to commit genocide. Um, I, lo I, love, I love the whole meme. This is a PG game. <laughs> no come from orbit! PG. It's very PG. Right. Oh, we're fighting someone. Oh, this, this very, very dangerous construction ship. Sorry, I managed to escape. I feel I feel a bit glad. A little bit glad. Right, back, back you go, fleet. Back you go. Yes, turn round. Turn round. And as well, you can already see it. As soon as they arrive at the planet, they're gonna start bombing it. And we see all these lovely effects of little thinking, feeling dots of light being extinguished. There are a couple of things at play here. Uh, one is the doctrine of our bombardment, and the other is the planetary devastation. The two are, of course, intertwined. How quickly are you going to be able to bomb a planet into submission? Uh, depends on your fleet power. And also, you can pause the game and the effects will still go. So if you just want to stare endlessly at the destruction... You can if you want. Um, if, you, if you do, uh, then you sound like a cool person. <laughs> What am I even talking about? Um, so, on any fleet, you will have um, this button here, which did, which determines essentially what your policy is in terms of targeting civilians. Essentially, uh, so we've got selective, we've got indiscriminate, and then we can have a third one that I will talk about in a second. Selective, basically. Um, is the lightest version. It will do less damage to pops, it will do some damage to armies, it will do some damage to planetary infrastructure, such as buildings. Um, it won't kill the last, in this case, 21 pops off the planet, um, and it will not bombard planets that have no armies on them, so it's only for um, softening up military targets. If we wanted to up the tempo, we could go to indiscriminate. And when I click this, you'll see that the planet starts going pop a bit more. Now they're really going for it. Uh, so this is when you've got some anger issues to work out. Uh, heavy damage to army, heavy damage to the planet, uh, planetary infrastructure. It will do uh, far more damage to civilian populations. Uh, it won't kill the last 11 pops. And it's, they, they still won't fire if there's nothing defending the planet itself in the case of defense armies. And we can see, no, 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 no. Um, and we can see here the defense armies. We've already done a bit of damage to this one. Uh, we'll talk about that in more detail in a moment. Now, there is a third option. And it m won't be available to you unless you've got a specific set of uh, ethics. Um, and basically, if we go into policies, we could see here our orbital bombardment policy. Um, there is a third one called Armageddon. We can't even select it. Um, is there a wiki page on here? There should be. There should be. I accept cookies. Let's see. Right. If we go to orbital bombardment. Here we go. Orbital mind control laser. Wow, I didn't see that. Here we are. Armageddon. So basically, yeah, this, this is to just destroy planets. Not destroy as in uh, Death Star. You have to have a Colossus for that. Uh, but yeah, you can basically turn it into an irradiated hellscape with no one living on it. Uh, you have to be either a fanatic purifier or a determined exterminator in order to access the Armageddon stance. It will purge the planet of all life. So there'll be no point invading it because you've turned it into a lifeless hunk of irradiated rock. We're not going to do that. Uh, a, because we can't. And B, because it's not our goal. Our goal here is to take the planet. So... We can use orbital bombardment to soften it up if we wanted to. If we start running the game again, uh, we're on indiscriminate now, so we're just throwing 
high yield explosives at this planet. And we can have a look and we can see that slowly but surely this army here is starting to take damage. Um, it's already down to almost two-thirds of its existing health. Um, after this one is destroyed, then the next one, and so on and so forth until there are none left. When there are none left, they will stop bombing because the planet is then considered undefended. We've also got a devastation ometer here. As it gets higher, different factors will apply. So when you get to 25%, Planetary armies, such as these ones, will start taking more damage. Pops will start becoming more susceptible to be killed. Uh, so below 25%, it's not possible for any Pops to, to actually be killed by our bombardment because they're all currently in shelters. Um, if we just speed up the game a little bit, we're going to get that over 25% and we'll see it moving to the first zone. Here we are. So now they can. Construction complete. Oh, good. We constructed something. Um, and as you can see, devastation causes the planet to really get, get into trouble here. Housing minus 29%. Um, basically, it, it exact, it, equivalent to the devastation figure. Housing down 29%. Amenities down. Trade value down. Resource generation down. Uh, obviously, immigration pull is down because who wants to move to a planet that is actively being bombed from orbit? Um, I'm surprised that even... 71% uh, of people would, would are, are considering buying houses in, in Bnuraka. But there we are. The higher the devastation, the more damage um, armies will take, but also the more damage the actual planet will take. So we can see, well, that, that was broken anyway. Um, but it's possible to destroy all the buildings um, and have a very high devastation to the world. So when you do actually take it, it's a case of rebuilding. Um, or... Or, very important, or, or you could not bombard it at all. Let's go fly away. And in fact, what we can do now is we can just go and, uh, so that's a fortified system there, the Azeroth system. We'll just go there, take out the starbase, and claim the system. And because there's not a planet here, if we just speed up the game a little bit, uh, so they'll zip over in a second. In a second. There we go. They're just going to take out the starbase, and as soon as they've taken out the starbase and it's under occupation, we will then be in ownership of the of the system as a whole. So there we go. Pew, 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 pew. There we go. We can see now that we've got this nice little icon um, of these two would-be crossed swords. It looks kind of spiky. Um, and now the system is fully occupied by us. We can see here, we've got our logo got our logo on this system, but we can see it's only partly occupied. Why? Because we haven't taken the planet. Also, what's this little battery icon? That's the devastation level. If it's fully depleted, the planet is uh, essentially <laughs> maximum bombed. Uh, so what we could do now is we could just literally um, start moving towards our key targets. Uh, so, and th those will be the populator systems and the star bases. Uh, so, it, well, instead of, if, if we did this, uh, what would happen is this fleet's goal is to reach the star of this system. This might mean, depending on how things are worked out, for example, Lingol's at a bit of an angle. So they might appear here and just fly straight past, and we don't want that. So if we want to essentially conquer everything in a line, we would right-click on Lingol, then hold shift, right-click on Ditanal, and then Afkashan. Uh, whatever, and it would go to each star in turn, take the star base and move on. Why are we not bothering with this? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Let's build some space marines. For that, you need a populated planet. Uh, what's the nearest populated planet to here? It might be, is it Twigos? No. Not about anything Kokoda, do you? No. Ah, oh, so far, so far. It's, there's there's got to be there's got to be somewhere. That's that's a primitive world with pyramids on it. We can't really get them into power on it. Um, Toybus, no. So it's gonna be all the way back to Oldor um, in the the Oldor Prime system. So, on every planet in your empire, you will have the armies tab. Here we are. We can see here we've got some garrison armies, the stronghold outfit, um, two Velveteerans, and two Sarthid, uh, which is another race in our empire, of course. 
And we want to make some space marines. So what we're going to do is we're going to click recruit and we will see here we've got assault armies of different uh, races in our empire. Why do we need to think about different races in our empire? Because some races have the strong or very strong trait, which means that they are better at being space marines, um, which is obviously good for us. Let's have a quick look at the tool tip. Uh, so we've got health and morale. Um, essentially, morale is the key thing to think about. When morale falls to zero, uh, then the army is, is kaput. They'll surrender. That's it. Um, health is also, of course, a factor because um, if you've got like a robot army, uh, we don't even have robot armies here because we, we don't have soulless machines in the Commonwealth. Um, they don't have morale because they're just kill bots. They don't care. Um, but they can, of course, be destroyed. Uh, we can see here average damage per day, 1.87 to 3.75. Um, again, it's a dice roll. We've got collateral damage. Uh, so, of course, if you're fighting a war, you're going to use some artillery and things like that. And it can cause you to blow up some stuff that you might not want to. Uh, this increased the devastation meter. Um, and the devastation level as a whole, as we looked at with the planetary bombardments. So that's one thing to consider. Um, and then, so you will have assault armies from the very beginning. You can then get some fancy ones. So we've got clone armies here that cost less and are essentially the exact same because uh, we just clone them in vats. Uh, you can only have, you can only build a certain amount um, of assault armies. So let's see, how many can we click here? Oh, we can click a lot here. We've got 55 pops on this planet. This is crazy. 57. This is bonkers. 102. Is, th is this real? Yeah, okay. So we could have 102 armies of space marines if we wanted. Uh, we're going to cancel all of these. Wow, this is going to take a long time. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, so, we've also got here a psionic army. Ooh. Much more expensive, but look at that damage. Um, and then morale is five... No, not five. Uh, two... Two and a half times higher than a normal assault army because they're, they, they're, they're psionic warriors. I mean, you know, space marines versus a whole army of inquisitors. If, if you're into your 40k. Um, and that's a lot. That's pretty good. Do we want to use a load of psionic armies? Yeah, could do. Could do. They take a lot longer to train. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to use clone armies. Because they're quick, they're cheap. So, whatever. So, we're going to get a load of Velveteer clones. We're just going to click this button loads of times. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to get some armies. Uh, we're going to have 19 in total. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. And I'm going to put instant build on. So, every day... Let's close that. So, every day... Oh, it's done it all! There we are. So, now we... <laughs> <laughs> Insta Space Marines. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, so now we have this um, this group now. 20 armies. We can assign a leader to it. Uh, recruit a general. Uh, what does this one do? Army morale plus 10%. Army damage plus 5%. Sounds pretty good to me. Uh, we've got adaptable. That's a pretty standard trait. Uh, we've got army logistician. Army upkeep minus 20%. We're not really that stuck for resources. So we're going to go for the one that makes our troops fight better. And we're going to assign him. And there we are. And it's the same thing with fleets as well. Um, apologies if we've already covered admirals. But if we go to the um, Northern Fleet that is doing our fighting, uh, we've got an admiral on there. Um, she is, I'm saying she, I don't really know. Uh, does it say? No, it doesn't. Uh, that's just Velveteer. Um, eager. Leader cost and upkeep minus 50%. Great. Psychic. Again, this is because we're spiritualists. We've gone through the psychic ascension perk. Uh, we'll talk about more in, about that in more detail a bit later um, in a different video. So that gives us bonus to damage and evasion. And then we've got a brain slug host. This is via an event. It's very fun. Uh, fire rate, evasion, and ship upkeep are all affected very positively. And that affects all the ships on our fleet, which is very nice. Back to our space marines. 
that are all the way over here. We need to get them to this planet. Uh, are we going to be facing enemy fleets? Probably not, because we're going to be racing with our um, northern fleet here. So we're just going to jump them as far as we can to the Tureus system, if we can actually select it. Um, also, you'll have armies on your outliner, uh, so we can just initiate jump, and we'll do that. We're just going to get it super fast, and we'll see they'll appear suddenly in the Tureus system. Uh, and then we just need to move them to Wendell. If, of course, it takes more than 200 days, which it will, we can jump them again as soon as the jump drives are recharged. So we're going to skip to that point. We'll see you in a second. Okay, so our jump drives have recharged. We're just going to jump now to make the final hop. Ten days left. Boosh. And they will now be in the Wendell system. So... Let's have a quick recap. We've got a total of 558 army strength. This is calculated in a similar way to fleet strength. Um, compare that to the garrison strength of this planet, which is 168. I think we're going to be fine. So we're going to take our army. We're going to right click on the planet and click land armies. There we go. And they're going to quickly zip over. And they're going to, right now, there are generals going, you'll do this for the nation in which you were born. You do this for your family and your friends and the idea of this great commonwealth. And now they have arrived and they'll start. You can see here these little these little drop pods will appear. Uh, let's slow it down. And there we go. This is the planet fall. Titanfall in 30 seconds. So here we go. And then we'll have another. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And then they all the disappear. And the, uh, the actual ships have disappeared because they're now all on the planet. And we can see the battle. So, for those who played Hearts of Iron 4, we've got combat width again. Um, combat width, it, how many armies can fight at the same time, essentially. Uh, so, in this case, it's eight. And it's determined by the size of the planet. So, we can have eight armies attacking their armies at any one time. They obviously only have six, so they put all of them on to defend their planet. Uh, and we can see here how it's progressing. Each day, armies will take damage, uh, reflected by this red circle. Hopefully, just before they die, they'll be swapped out for someone in reserve. So there we are. This one, that one got destroyed. Uh, but this one's been taken out of the battle and replaced with fresh troops. And that means that uh, if we win the battle, uh, these reserves, uh, well, these guys that have disengaged... Uh, we'll be able to heal up Research in complete. between, oh goody, in between battles and we can keep that army there. Uh, so we can see here, we're just doing the damage, killing these robots, speed it up a little bit. And as soon as we've cleared out the last defenders, the planet will be under our control. So we've only got one left now, garrison's collapsing. Emancipated, love that. Uh, so we've successfully invaded it. What happens now? The planet's under our control. Um, can we do stuff with it? No. No, we can't. Because it's under occupation. Do I want to sue for peace? No. Um, but it does mean that we're going to start getting a little bit of, re of resources from it. Um, and it's going to start repairing itself, which is good. Close that. And now, if we wanted to, we can take that army. You can see it is uh, recovering. We only had one army that was in serious trouble. Um, and we can now start to look at invading other planets. We don't have any in quite a, a long distance. So we're just going to jump to the front line here. And now let's take stock of the tactical situation. Ooh, ooh they've actually got fleets. I didn't know they had fleets in this area. There we go. All right, so we've got tactical situation. But all right, I've talked about what the plan was, and that now we've actually seen this enemy hardware here. Two pretty, pretty interesting fleets here. We may have underestimated their resolve, but we'll we'll um <laughs> we'll look at that. Um, war tutorial. He loses the war. It's because we've got fleets everywhere. Uh, so it when it said pathetic, it calculates our entire fleet against their entire fleet. And we've got fleets just sitting there. This Western fleet has another 26k just sitting there. We didn't really 
invest our entire infrastructure. But I'm confident in our in our inevitable victory. So, how do you win a war? Two ways. You either sue for peace, um, and you have something called a status quo peace. So if we go here, sue for peace, um, we've got three buttons. Uh, we've got achieve war goals, which basically says surrender or die. They're not going to do that because of these reasons. Um, we've got we surrender, and they'll go, yeah, all right, cool. And then we've got a status quo, which basically means we we it's a ceasefire, whatever. The war ends. Depend and and what happens, what the results are, depends on where you are in terms of the war itself. So at the moment, <coughs> we have occupied these these systems. Azeroth, Wendell, Lingol, Deepnal, and Afghashan. How many of them do we have claims on? Let's get our claims button. And we can see that we've got actually registered claims on these four systems. So if we had a white piece now, well not a white piece, a status quo piece, we would take control of these systems and the planet that we've conquered. We wouldn't take control of Afghashan, even though we're occupying it. Why? Because we don't have a claim. That's the most important thing. You need to make, if you're invading a, uh, another empire and you sue for peace and it's a status quo, if you don't have a claim on systems you've occupied, you've essentially just, you just give them back and that might not be in your interest. So if we added that as a claim, make it official, if we did a status quo peace now, we would take Afghashan as well. Now I've moved forward with the fleet to this cluster here. Because if you want to win a war without waiting for the enemy to tire and surrender, you just need to overpower them. How do you do that? You take out all of their facilities for rebuilding their fleets, such as their star bases. We can't actually see it here. Uh, we should be able to. I don't know why we can't. We've got a fleet next door. Why can't, why can't I see their station? Anyway, they will have a station there. If we took that out, took out the Brias one, took out the Shant of Giovanni one as well. They have no capacity to rebuild their fleets. So we've pretty much won. Then all we need to do is uh, conquer the planets. And when we've taken all the planets that they own and all of the upgraded space stations that they own, the war is over and we win automatically. So that was what the objective was. I didn't even think they had fleets, but now they do. So we're going to have to have a really amazing space battle. And that's going to be great. I'm pretty sure they're going to try and take the Detonal system back. Uh, so let's get ready. Now we have Intel. We can see them racing. Yes, whatever. I don't care. Um, we can see them racing towards the Detonal system. So we're, we're pretty confident on what they're trying to do here. We might not actually win this battle. Um, but we're going to get our fleet ready. Now we get into things like Doctrines. Oh, what are they doing? Oh, they're trying to outmaneuver us. So remember, they don't have to fight the station unless they get within weapons range. They can try and bypass it entirely. So they're probably trying to get back the Wendell system, which has a planet on it. Um, or they might just be trying to invade us. Who knows? Let's see whether we can intercept them. I don't know if we'll be able to. Actually, yeah, we'll be able to. Yeah, whatever. Stop giving me non-war information. This is a war video. Oh, they got away. Station under attack. And they're bombing the station. Yeah, that, it's, a, it's a big fleet, so I'm not surprised that they won. And we're just going to chase them across the stars now. Oh, dear. Chase them across the stars. Oh, just about. Oh, but we could... Oh, oh, sorry, military transport. You were too late. Goodbye. Uh, oh, come on. Keep going. Right, so they've now engaged their station again. And they've taken it. And now they're stopping. So that was their goal. So we'll be on them shortly. Here we are. Prepare for big space battle. I might get some footage of this, so we're going to save it. Um, actually, we'll save it on this little space battle. Um, and here we go. So here we go. Swords are joined. Long range weapons are firing. Carrier craft are being launched. 
corvettes are getting ready, picket ships are ready to take our enemy strike craft, as well as missiles and, and all kinds of other stuff. So we are now going to see what we can do here. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Because they've essentially, they've, they've just come right forward, um, engaging our battleships at close range, which is good. Uh, they've got quite a few themselves. We're up against 12 battleships. We've only got six of our own, um, but we are doing a lot of damage uh, because our technology is, well, better. It's just better. None of our battleships are out of the fight yet. We've, we've had some corvettes withdraw. Uh, we can see here in the battle, um, if you've got ships that uh, are about to be destroyed, they might warp away. Um, in which case, we'll have a little flag. Um, or they're just blowed up, which is the big red cross. The battle goes well. One of, uh, yeah, we've only got two fleets left. All of our battleships are still in play. We've still got our carriers causing chaos. Um, although a lot of our fleet is now withdrawn. Uh, so uh, we might not actually win this one. I overestimate, underestimated their resolve there. So they've just won that battle, which is bad for us because now we've got a space battle that affects war exhaustion. What's war exhaustion? It's how sick you are of this war. Uh, so at the moment, uh, we've destroyed ten of, uh, we've destroyed eleven of their ships um, in that battle. We didn't lose any. We just ran away. Um, now we can have a fleet doctrine that says no retreat. That's under our policies here. Um, war doctrine, no retreat. Why well, have we got defense in depth? I don't want that. No, I want rapid deployment. Silly boy. Um, and now what they're going to do, they're probably going to try and take their planet back. Where's our fleet going to appear? Our fleet's currently uh, in, in the void, just hanging out, trying to find somewhere to, to call home. So you know what we're going to do? I'm not satisfied with that outcome. So we've got the Western fleet within jump range, so we're going to jump to the Wendell system. Uh, is this the right thing to do? No, because we're using a jump drive, but their fleets are shattered. Uh, so even with the penalty, we could probably still take them out. So we're now getting the Western Fleet in. Um, we need to take out the Starbase. Uh, why? Because we've got an FTL inhibitor. So we can't actually move back to the Lingol system. Um, we could only move... Actually, we, we, can't, we can't go anywhere because we jumped into the system. So we don't only be able to jump out again. So I've taken the Windale system. We're going to take the uh, Lingol system. We're, we're just going to... Spaceport under attack. Essentially just do all this again. Spaceport under attack. See, the fleet's now only at 17k. It was at 26 something. Uh, it's been reduced because obviously we've got the, the jump drive penalty. Um, so we'll just quickly knock out this space station. No, don't you dare! Yeah, we might we might lose our little. our armies. Uh, to get some new ones. Oh dear. Oh well. It's not good for our war exhaustion. Come on, fleet! Go do it. Uh, we've got the Western Fleet in position. We're just going to wait for their jump drives to recharge, which is three days. So actually, we could start sending them on to Segalia. Uh, we need to destroy all of these shipyards to make sure our enemy cannot reinforce. Uh, we don't want them to, do, to be able to build any more ships. We don't want them to do anything uh, that would result in them being able to overpower our fleet here. Perhaps we should have invested more resource into this campaign, but we did not. So here we are, we see the fleets there, they've got 24 compared to our 24, uh, but we've got better technology, so let's see how it goes. Um, obviously we've got long range coming in, we've only got a couple of battleships in this one. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to make some damage here, we'll just uh, speed it up a little bit. Right, so again, we didn't lose any ships, they just ran away when they started to take some damage, but they lost 12, so we're, we're causing some pretty, pretty heavy casualties. <laughs> I've got another. These oh, these I feel sorry for these people. I got one of uh, another enemy. Um, it was not an enemy fleet. It's just another empire that's at war with them. It's starting to cause some issues for them. Um, <clears throat> so our fleet, our original fleet, wherever they are, let's get the eastern fleet in. Let's just get all the fleets in. So, egg on my face, ladies and gentlemen. I thought this would be a cakewalk. But, life is about learning how to deal with disappointments. So, 
what we've got here in the Kokonan system on our, our side of the border is we've got a large star base and I'm adding some shipyards to it. I've already got one and I'm adding a couple more. Why Why? why would I do that? Uh, let's quickly just finish finish them off by putting into the back on. Complete. Lovely, let's turn it off again. Uh, and we run out of minerals. Uh, well, no, actually, no, the opposite. We've got so much, uh, the stores are inundated. So that's good. Uh, now, what, why, why would we have why would we have a station on the, on the border? Because we can use it as a springboard. So we are repairing our, our ships at the starbase. Uh, we can reinforce at the starbase as well. So we just click that button. Obviously, we need to have enough money to cover it. Uh, but now the starbase will start to churn out ships for us. Um, actually, yeah, turn this back on. Let's prepare to see a load of ships appear. Wow. There we are. Done. So that fleet's now fully reinforced. Let's go and cause some problems. Egg face. Can't believe, can't believe this. Can't believe we're in this situation. Let's go and show them what for. Pew, pew, pew. And now let's actually show this fleet what we're made of. Bye. See you later. Yada, yada, yada. Pew, pew, pew. All the fighters going around causing problems. And we've won the battle. Shocking. Uh, now let's just take out the other one. Oh, that's nice. Um, oh, they're running away. Let's catch them. Let's catch them. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. Two fleets, loads of fleet power. Let's just split them up so it looks a bit sexier. And they're all there, they're all waiting. So now we're at the stage for a final battle. Uh, why has this all happened here? <laughs> because they're at war with these other guys. Uh, this is a machine uprising against this empire. So, oh, something's happened here. Our Federation cohesion is falling. Oh, oh, whatever. Um, that actually would be something to, to worry about, uh, but uh, I don't right now. I don't care. Let's take them out. So we are literally just going to roll over them now. We've got all of our materials, all of our fleets are in place. Uh, they're going to move as one, and we're just going to go through these three core systems. They're going to try and hold on to them, of course, because now they're in an existential crisis. There's a starbase. Not anymore. That was pretty simple. We're now going to move on to the Brius system. Then we're going to go to Subtranius. Um, wait, can we not leave? Ooh, yes, we can. Of course, we can. We need to. Yeah, you can't. We can't plot a course because we need to take out this starbase first because it's got an FTL inhibitor. As soon as that's done, we can move on to the Subtranius system. Then on to the Shantashavani. Ch well, this this empire loves its long names. Um, we can see here some reinforcements and they're slowly just following around because they're going to join up with the fleet when they arrive. Um, and we can see here the enemy capital of Escant. And that's where their fleets are, re are retreating to. Uh, so we can see here this fleet's moving to try and defend Shanta Shivani, uh, and they're not going to be able to because now we've got the whole might of the Commonwealth. Take out this station. And there we go. We now move to the Ashkant system. This fleet's retreating, uh, going to Rantor, um, because they might be able to win a battle there. And we are just going to basically cripple uh, their ability to make and reinforce their fleets. Toodaloo. And then we go to Shukan. This fleet's just sitting there. Doesn't quite know what it's supposed to do, so just quickly wipe out this one. With overwhelming firepower. And then we go back to the Rantor system. Right, final battle at the Rantor system, which they've just taken from um, another empire they're at war with. So this is it. They've got nowhere left to run. The final battle of this conflict is about to play. Space Battle 2. Lovely. So I'm feeling pretty confident. So we've got our larger ships there at the back. These are the artillery ships. And literally they're just going to go poof. Obviously this is all running quite quickly. 
So that's that. Big old space battle. We won that. Now we get to the station. Take that out. Done. Our enemy now has no capacity to rebuild their fleets without building new space stations. So that's pretty much the war over. They still won't set, settle with us uh, because they're not happy. But all we need to do is occupy a few more st systems uh, or conquer one of their planets, which we will be able to do now. Let's go to... Oh, another fleet has appeared. I don't know where they appeared from. Let's go deal with them. Their fleets have been destroyed. They've got nowhere to reinforce to. Uh, obviously, when our fleets were, were defeated, they went back to their home station. We now control all the home stations. So we're going to quickly just uh, deal with this. My god, that's a lot of Psy Warriors. So yeah, we're doing a lot of damage. This is not going to take long. And we can have a look. Obviously, every time we do something uh, effective, um, it becomes more likely that the enemy will want to sue for peace. So let's take the capital world of Mukovrak Ro. Quickly hop over there. And they're just at a loss now. They've 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 lost the war. They can't do anything. Um, quickly nab this planet. Uh, this is of course their capital, so we can see here. Oh, they've still got 168. Uh, they've made no real effort to particularly fortify it. Psy uh, warriors can't really can't really beat them. Are we gonna lose one? Are they gonna withdraw it? Nope. Oh, we didn't even have a general. Don't even bother. Aggressor colony emancipated. Done. And then, what, what other planet? Got one down there? No. Got one over here? No. So what's 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 left? What's left? Are there any planets left? Have we forgotten about them? Oh, we forgot to... Oh no, we've occupied that one. So what's left then? Sugalia. Oh, we forgot to occupy this one. Oopsie doopsie. Let's jump them back to Sugalia. And then we'll take Bwaka. And I think if that's the last one they've got, that will be the end. Land them all. Planetary invasion begun. Didn't even have anyone. Right, and there we go. That's it. So, we've had these two factions appear. We'll talk about why in a second. Um, they have surrendered. This war is over. We admit defeat. Because we've taken everything that they have. They have nothing left. Of course, as I said previously, we didn't claim these systems up here. So, best possible outcome. Great, they surrendered. We didn't claim these systems. So, we don't have any... We, you know, we've given them back. The systems we did want and claimed, we've taken. Including the Wendell system with that nice planet. The blue, blue rocker. Of course, this has resulted in us inheriting quite a lot of pops. And these pops have their own political beliefs. And these political beliefs enable them to create factions. So we've got the one throne group that have appeared. Uh, extreme centralization of political military power. So they're hard authoritarians. Um, and then we've got Liberty Now. Uh, where they work for equality and justice. So they're... The exact opposite. <laughs> They're egalitarians. Um, and we can have a look on our faction screen to see them. Uh, so the One Throne group. Um, extreme authoritarianism and extreme egalitarianism as well. So, there we go. We've won the war. This is how we won the war. These are the mistakes we made. We, didn't, we, we underestimated our foe. Um, and that's it. And now we have to wait 10 years at least before go being able to go to war again if we wanted to. Um, but they are still at war with their previous oppressors, because this is a machine uprising, these guys. Um, but we've taken some territory, we've established our dominance, and we can move on and consider our strategic position from here on out. And there we are. The Great Velveteer Commonwealth has demonstrated its resolve to fight the battles it needs to in order to survive and be a dick about things. This concludes this three-part 
war tutorial in Stellaris. I hope you have found it very useful, if not overly long. <laughs> A lot of complex systems all intertwined with each other. Uh, it's far longer than I thought it would be. Three videos, each quite long in themselves. I hope you've enjoyed the journey at the very least. Um, and thank you so, so, I know, I know this is cliche, I know every YouTuber says this, but thank you so much for watching, quite seriously. Uh, and, and a mega special thanks to, to the patrons who actively, you know, get their wallets out and, and help me, uh, you know, create this content. Um, that, that at least one person enjoys, I, I hope, <laughs> I pray. Uh, so thank you so much for them. They, of course, are on the bottom of your screen now. If you're not subscribed, press the red button, because, you know, that's, that's how it works. That's how this industry works. If you don't like what, if you don't like what I'm doing, then press the dislike button and say horrible things in the comments. And then I will say, why have you watched an hour and some minutes of, of it? You didn't like it. It's just self-torture, really, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> oh, and with that, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Overcane. More Stellaris content and tutorials coming on the way. Uh, we're going to do more live streaming as well. So we're on Twitch at Nova Kane Gaming. Also on Twitter as well if you want to send me some cool stuff. And with that, I think we're going to sign off. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Nova Kane. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And of course, no matter where you are, have a wonderful night.